that forward for dharma and that forward to protect the dharmic way of life what is the mechanism by which incidents that happen that awaken or light up that fervor and it spreads like a wildfire the fervor for a dharmic way of life is only possible if you know what a dharmic way of life is and a dharmic way of life is something very individual there is no you know top down discourse about what dharma is dharma is an individual experience it's different from religion religion is a top down imposition of concepts constructs edicts dictums and many ways and means of living that are imposed on a on a person or on societies with the idea that you can then connect with a power outside yourself whereas with spirituality it's the opposite it's it's something that grows from within from bottom up so that fervor for dharma is actually a fervor a longing a yearning for the right way to live for yourself there's no one right way for everyone that is why you you say hindu dharma because it isn't a religion it's a huge body of different ways and means of living according to each one's choice so your fervor for dharma is actually your fervor for the right way to live for yourself in other words a way of living which keeps the suffering low and raises the joyousness of your existence and that actually is what you develop and grow a fervor for and that fervor can emerge in all parts of the system it's not just a conceptual exercise oh i have to fight for dharma you know it's also an emotional exercise it's that experience of devotion of deep deep gratitude and devotion for a freedom to think and do as you feel right for your system the freedom to move inward and listen to the antar atman the antar guru the soul the source and not to be a servant or a slave of an external system so you're not a servant of a religion you're a servant of the truth which is the antar guru the master within that instance within yourself which impulses you into action that will increase your joy and reduce your suffering that's what it's about the fervor is not just in the in the emotional it's not just in the conceptual it's also in the very materiality because you have to take action with this body and go with the truth within if you feel that you can live out a dharmic way of life simply because you have lofty ideals and lofty thoughts you're sadly mistaken because life will come and give you a slap or two then you know so the 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 point is that you do it in action you do it in devotion bhakti you do it in the conceptual gnana you you train yourself in in concepts and being sharp in the thinking in being deep and wide in the emotions in being strong in the physicality of your system but then it's also a question of being transformative so when you live a dharmic way of life you are essentially tuning in to the antar guru in every moment so it's always the viveka buddhi that's at play the ability the shakti the power to discern is this action coming from the truth of my system or is it coming from the ego from the ahankar all the loud noise that ahankar is 
you can also in that state of humility, because you, you have to surrender to that impulse of the soul, you cannot come with your own ideas, this is right, this is wrong, it's its own boss, you know. It's not going to bother about what society thinks and what the family thinks and what anyone thinks for that matter. So, when you train as a, as a sadhak, you are training to be a servant of the soul, to be an instrument of the soul. And that fervor is also, apart from the very materiality of your being, the emotions, the conceptual being, it's also expressed transformatively, where you can take actions that cause sudden changes, that cause changes in large arcs. And that's when that fire spreads. The fire spreading, it's not a missionary approach to this. You cannot be missionary as a spiritual seeker, finder. Why? Because it's a bottom-up experience. The maximum you can do is to offer that teaching to others. Because you can only be a missionary if the other thing is not good. Like the Catholic missionaries. They had that fervor of being missionaries because they actually believed that if you don't take the path of being part of that church and living through those experiences, you'll just go to hell. It was really a belief, you know. But that is what religion does. It, it propagates itself through its own exclusivity. Spirituality is not like this because everybody knows who's a spiritual seeker that there is an Atma there, there's an Atma there, there's an Atma there, there's an Atma, Antaratman, and that it's all of the same thing. So essentially what, what separates you from the other is not a set of beliefs, but an illusion of separation. So that's how it is, you know, that fervor to protect the Dharma is actually the fervor to stand up for the right to go with your truth. And when you understand that, then you are dharmic, then you are living a dharmic life, and else you are just not. <laughs>